second rant for the day. That's why I'm still wearing the same shirt. It is the 1st of April. Happy April Fools to everyone. It's about 2.06 in the afternoon. Greetings to all. Please ensure you are following your field on social media, wherever you're at. It's going to help them out. Uh, if you're in the Northern California area, we have U.S. Airsoft in Anderson. We have UCAS in Galt, California. CQB City, Stockton. Uh, West Coast Adventure Park in Slough House. And the Airsoft Ministry in Roseville. Check them out. Google search them. Instagram search them. Facebook them. Getting all of that. All right. How the heck, how the heck did a teeny tiny little airsoft field in the backyard of a church, how did it get so big? It's so big. It's so many people. We were itty. We were just this itty. Look, look how big we were. We were this big. We were just this big. And now we've grown and grown and grown and grown. And now I'm trying to get people to stop showing up and start going to other fields. So the field stays at a decent size. And, you know, crowd control. How did we do it? How did we do it in the short span of two, two years, give or take? You're a field owner, field manager. You're going to want to pay attention to this. Because I'm about to give you all the secrets. It's really not a secret. It's just obsessions. Um, so when I joined the Airsoft Ministry staff in about maybe March or April, <laughs> early, we'll say early 2016, uh, started, let's see, I got back from Cuba in December 15, started playing, yeah, I'd say probably about April, um, we were averaging around maybe 60 to 80 players per Sunday. Not a whole lot of birthdays, not a whole lot of Saturday events. It was very rare that we did something outside of a normal play on Sunday. We weren't really doing special events. Maybe once in a blue moon, we would do something on like a holiday here or there. Uh, we had an annual night game, which was around somewhere around Halloween. I think it was like the Halloween night game. Not doing a whole lot on social media. Didn't have a lot of followers. Didn't have a whole... We were just... Small. It's like a small little backyard field. So fast. F so. So I come on in early 2016. By this time, by right here. So we're here now. Before this, I had already had a little bit of experience managing social media and doing that stuff uh, with my little shooting business. So I had sort of started to understand how to use Facebook and Instagram as a marketing tool for business. Uh, and I had a lot of spare time on my hands. Uh, so, towards the end of 2016, probably, let's say like somewhere between October to December of 2016, I asked Ethan if I could be added to uh, the social media stuff like they they had lives they're always busy i was like dude i can do this uh so he added me as a editor contributor or whatever what have you on facebook and on instagram and i just sort of took it and ran with it what i had figured out and what i had started doing was anytime anyone was on the field i was taking a buttload of pictures i was so i try to take about I try. Uh, on an average Sunday, I try to get between like 50 to 70 decent good shots of hopefully everyone. Um, of I try to get a couple pictures of every player. Some kind of can I, like if I gotta do, if I gotta run the desk, if I gotta go you know over here, it happens, right? It happens. Uh, but that's what I try to do. Be and then I will post that to Facebook in its own album. If you're not using Facebook albums, then you're just sort of bleh, all over the place and you're not organizing. So if I'm a player and I'm at your airsoft field and I want to see if you got pictures of me and I can just go to that album that is like the date or something signal like the date or birthday party or mail sim day or tournament or whatever, I know or can reasonably understand that if there's going to be a picture of me, it's going to be in that album. I will find that picture, I will most likely tag myself, or I will share it to my personal 
Facebook feed and go, hey, I had a lot of fun here. I am then letting all my friends know that I was playing Airsoft at your field. So what you're doing by posting pictures of players is you are tell is and when they repost or share that they are gener they are your prom- they're marketing for you they're doing your job for you because they're letting all their friends know that they had a great time at your business look that's how marketing works in that aspect if i take a picture of you at my business and i upload it to where everyone can see it and it makes you happy you will share that and go, hey, I had a great time at this restaurant. Here's what it looked like. This was great. Here's They even took my picture. Boom, here's a picture of me having fun. Yay, smiles and tacos, whatever, right? My friends will then go, man, if he had fun there, maybe I'll have fun there. You know what? Let's check it out. And that's what you want is their, your customers' friends to go, let's check it out. Because now they become customers, regulars, etc., um, so I did that for the Facebook group, or excuse me, the Facebook page. I tried to do it for private birth for the birthday parties also, because uh, a lot of parents are usually kind of hesitant to go onto the field, so they will take pictures from the sidelines with their phone. You don't get the best picture quality with a phone from 15, 20 yards away. So what I would try to do is, so this is my phone. Boop, that's my phone right there. Uh, it's a Galaxy 9, S9, something like that. Uh, so I would try and go in and just take as many pictures as I could of kids having fun and you know shooting each other and holding guns and all that stuff. And then I would go to the parents and say, hey, I, I know you guys were taking pictures off this side. I just uploaded 30 pictures of, for the birthday party. It's in our Facebook page. If you go to the albums... Look for today's date for the afternoon party, and that's where all your pictures are stored. Let's let's remember that photography is very popular. That's why photography is its own business. Look at wedding photography. Look at event photography. If you own an airsoft field and you can take 20 pictures on your phone of those kids having fun and then tell their parents that you did that, those parents are going to appreciate that. And they're going to tell their friends, and they're going to want to give you more money. Duh! Uh, also, what you have figured out... I'm going to cut my head back here. I keep messing with it. What you will then figure out is that your Facebook clientele, or your Facebook following, is mostly parents. So you have to market to the your, your parents and then your players kind of separately. For the most part, there's a, a small percentage of players that are on Facebook also, but usually Facebook is for parents. Uh, then, then there's the events I started doing. So when I would create an event, I would try and create it uh, months in advance so everyone can plan out when they want to go. There's a, Obviously, I'll change a date here and there. Like I think I changed the date on uh, something we were doing in May. I think I pushed it to June or something like that. But, and within those Facebook events... I try and tell everyone everything they need to know. That way no one shows up and goes, and I go, oh, we, well, this event, we don't have rentals here. So you need to go. I'm sorry you wasted your gas, but you need to go home. Oh, that's not good. Uh, so I, when, I create, <clears throat> when I create a Facebook event, I make that as detailed and specific as possible. Once you get to the Instagram, that's where you start to really make your money with your players. Almost every player you're going to have. Now, when I'm talking players, what I'm... What I mean under the word player is your customers from about 27 years old and younger is about the average age range of your Instagram users, give or take. Like if I look at the analytics for, excuse me, if I look at the analytics for the Airsoft Ministries Facebook page, I go to Insights, uh, I look at Audience. Here's the age range right here. Here are the here's the live analytics for the Airsoft Ministries Instagram. Right. Hang on. Hang on. There it is. Is it focusing? Uh a large percentage of our users are 18 to 24 and then followed by 25 to 34. Uh and then oh wow, we had a lot. Man, we're growing a lot. So about 13 to t- about 25. Is the is the large chunk of our market uh, on Instagram? 
uh, constantly telling people to use our hashtag, hashtag, hashtag Airsoft Ministry. And by doing that, look what I've done. So we go into here. See on the bio, on the bio it says hashtag Airsoft Ministry. So I can click on that hashtag. And it brings up, it's arranged by recent, all. So right now we've got, was that 19, about 1900 users, about 1900 posts for that. That's content for me. So if I don't have, if I can't think of anything I want to post for that day, I will go to that hashtag and see if there's anything catchy, any videos of gameplay, any pictures of anything, you know, kids having fun. If you are not post, I, this is my opinion, my personal opinion. If you are not posting at least once a day something, if it's uh, your goal should be one story or one hard post a day. That's my goal. Sometimes I hit that goal. Sometimes I miss it. Sometimes I exceed it. But what you can't do is just let it be there. You can't. That, what are you doing? That, how, do you, how do you expect to grow your business that way? And have varied con so use Instagram as much as possible. Like if you look at our homepage, here's how it comes up. So I try to, in the bio, if we look at the bio, what we are, our operating hours and our prices and our hashtag Airsoft Ministry and our survey, the link for our survey monkey. And that survey is worth its weight in gold for us right now because we've put a lot of thought into the results from that survey. The other thing I use is highlights. Mm. That's not going to focus a lot. But if you go to our Airsoft Ministry Instagram, you'll see what I'm talking about. And I will use highlights almost like a, a bulletin board of stuff coming up. Mm. Oh. Yeah, we can do that later. That's how we grew. I'm telling you right now, that is one of the main ways in which we grew the airsoft field was we just paid attention to social media constantly and we answered questions. It's your, your social media is your customer service. That's it. So if you call a company, if you call a customer service, you don't want to wait on hold for 20 minutes. If you go to custom, like uh, if you're returning an item at a store, you don't want to wait in a huge long line. You want instant, immediate feedback. You want your problem addressed immediately. Okay, well, all I have to do is just look at my phone, which we do all the time anyway, and I see someone has a question, I just answer the question. That's not bad. That's really not taxing on my part. It doesn't cost anything uh, that I'm aware of, and it's just customer feedback. It's no different than if someone were to send you an email or a phone call and said, hey, I have this question. Okay, well, your social media following can do the same thing. It also advertises your field. Put up videos of what your field looks like because people ask us, hey, how big is your field? Well, if you look at our either our Instagram, our Facebook, or even our YouTube channel, there's a drone footage. There's drone footage up there. Someone flew their drone over the field several times for you know several minutes so, and told us, hey, here you go. And they just gave us the footage because they like us. So I put that up there. So if you're coming from out of town and you want to see what the field looks like, I'm not going to take two or three pictures of a couple buildings. That's not what the field looks like. Here's what it looks. the whole field looks like as a whole. Granted, most fields change their layout quarterly at least. Not too many fields keep the same layout from you know, the day they open to the day they close down. Most fields change the layout, usually I'd say quarterly. We try to do it once, sometimes twice a year. But for the most part, you can go see what it looks like on your phone. You don't have to call us. You don't have to email us. So when I'm doing stuff on on social media, when I'm interacting, my objective, here's the way I like to think of it. I don't like talking to people. I don't. I don't want to deal with, I don't want people to come up to me and ask me questions. And the way that I achieve this and the way that I maintain this is I get on my phone, I refresh my laptop, is I get on my phone 
and I answer all the questions online so that at any time, any player, assuming they do a little work, can go into the Instagram and click on a post or click on a highlight or they can go to the Facebook and they can click on an event or they can go to the website and they can have all their questions answered. So that leaves you, the staff member, to deal with more pressing issues on the field. If, let's say on an average Sunday, there's maybe three staff members, right? I can't devote all of my time talking to players and answering questions, answering the same question from 20 different people. I, I can't. I don't, we don't have the manpower. We don't have the staffing in which to do that. We have a field to run. So if someone comes up to me and says, hey, I have the question about this tournament. Like, okay, well, did you read the event? What event? I'll go on the Facebook page or the website or the Instagram that has all the, that should answer all of your questions. Oh, okay, thank you. Done. That's why I stress that players should follow one of our social media platforms. Uh, Usually Instagram and Facebook are the most up to date. The website, sometimes, sometimes, yes, sometimes no because I can't really manage a website for my phone. If I'm on a lunch break at class somewhere or from my buddy's house or I'm just you know, kind of hanging out somewhere and all I've got is my phone, well, you can do a lot with your phone, but you need to be posting at least once a day. If, the, if all you do is post when you're closed or open, you're not going to grow. Now, if you're, if you're fine with being small, if you're fine with what you have and you're just and you're not working for growth, you're only working for sustainment, God bless you. Then you shouldn't have even you probably shouldn't have even listened to this video. But if you're focused on growth, the easiest way to focus on growth is social media. That is how look, that's the reason you're listening to this video is because you probably follow me on my Instagram and at some point I probably said, "Hey, I posted a video." Guys, it's not hard. And it, it, for me, it frustrates me when I see prominent fields not living up to their fullest potential as a business because they, they either don't understand this or they're just, they don't have the time. Like, how many employees do you have? You can give someone, like, a, you get four people, like, read or editing rights and just have them post content. Just create a, like, a social media policy within your company. That says, hey, when we post, make sure we are and are not doing these things. Let's keep the language clean. Uh, let's make sure the pictures are appropriate. You know, let's watch for uh, players that have patches with like you know obscenities and stuff like that. You can create a policy. But what also it comes down to is a lot of field owners, or really a lot of business owners in general, not just to pick on airsoft field owners. A lot of people in general, owners, don't like to give up that control. They, they want it. they want that control because they're they're in their mind if they don't control it if they don't do it it will not be done to their standards and their standard is the only way because they own the company I've run into that a lot that happens Guy, guys and gals they, they don't want to give up that control they don't want to kind of open their minds sometimes usually that will happen for a little bit and at some point some fields will sort of come around and go you know what go for it here, here you go. Here, here's here's the password. Post, go crazy. Let's start doing this. Let's start doing that. Let's let's start doing more. Let's kind of almost rebrand or rewrite how we operate, which is so cool. Uh, but a, also a big piece of it is control. They just some field owners do not want to give up that control, or they just don't care. And to me, that's one of the worst parts. If you own a field or you manage a field, and you don't really care about its growth. What are you doing? Why did you open a field in the first place? I don't, I don't understand that. Uh, as a business owner, you should be concerned. You should want growth, especially if that's like your primary means of income. Yeah, you're gonna want to do a lot of stuff. This is free advertising. It's free marketing, and you can know that because I created. If you look at my very first post on ASM Caber. It was in like late 2016, I think. But basically in a year, without spending a single cent on advertising, I grew my account, ASM Caber, 
I grew it from nothing to over a thousand followers in a year with just using hashtags and content creation. That's it. Look at what we did for the Airsoft Ministry. We have never spent money on advertising. We haven't. We Why? There's no need to. It's why. So we went from about 800 followers to when I started messing with the inst with the social media. We had about 800 followers on Instagram, and now two years later we've exceeded about 2,300. That's a lot in about two years' time. With for a comp for a business that's really only open one day a week, that's significant to us especially as a nonprofit with a volunteer staff. It's real hard to find volunteers that are that it's fine hard. It's hard to find paid employees that care that much. You're talking about volunteer staff that just do it for fun, but if if you're a field owner, if you're an entrepreneur, you understand that in order for success in business, you need to obsess about that business. And anyone that knows me or talks to me or interacts with me or interacts with any of us, any of the volunteers, we're obsessed over that field. We're obsessed over Airsoft. And it, because we have a field and we don't get paid to go there. I go every Sunday and sometimes on Saturdays and weekdays to do stuff at the field. And the only thing I get out of it is, you know, a little warm, fuzzy feeling. A bunch of kids get happy because they shot each other in the face with toy guns and no one went to jail. Ta da! So that's how we did it. That is how a small, uh, tiny little backyard airsoft field is growing in Northern California and might give some of the other fields in Northern California a run for their money if they're not careful. <sighs> oh. All right, so uh, if you're watching this and what did I? Anyway, email popped up. Sorry, squirrel. If you are watching this, if you are, if you have a stock of some kind, if you're a manager, if you're an employee, if you're someone of status, I suppose, for an airsoft field or a paintball field or something, you want me to come hang out and talk about social media stuff, I'll do it for free. I don't care, just come out and talk to you. Uh, so far, I have done social media, what's, what's the word, uh, consultation for... Uh, one, uh, a German auto parts business in Roseville, Roseville, Rockland. Uh, I still manage, I still help manage the social media for a couple MMA fighters, amateur MMA fighters, uh, uh, a gym, a Muay Thai gym, Muay Thai martial arts gym, uh, who else do it? Me, uh, and a couple other people that want to pick me up to help them manage their social media as well. So... If you're in Northern California Airsoft Field, you want help with your social media, you want help growing that field, take a look at what I sort of help do with the Airsoft Ministry and message me. I'll come to your field. I don't care. I love you guys. I just want everyone to get, grow and have, be happy. I just want the community to get bigger. Uh, I want everyone to come together and get along and have fun. That's it. This is just fun for me. Obviously, it's just fun for me because I bought a Yeti microphone and a Logitech, really, it was just like the 229, so I can make videos that I don't get paid for. It's, that's how I have fun. So, it is almost 2.30. I have a client that I need to go help renew their CCW permit. I'm going to go make some cash. Then, I have an interview tonight to see if Landfest wants to pick me up as a volunteer social media guy for their upcoming land party in Sacramento. Check out Landfest Sacramento coming up in the summer of 2019. I'm going to be there. Even if I don't end up not working the event, I'm still going. So that's it. Go away.